This review has been made possible by Chevrolet of Naperville. As you know, Chevy has tons of brand new cars and trucks available for purchase, but did you know that they also have a remarkable selection of used cars? Head on over to ChevroletofNaperville.com and look through hundreds of used cars for sale right now. Alright, what's up guys? My name is Zach and today I am driving a 2022 Hyundai Palisade Calligraphy. Up front is a 3.8 liter V6 and down below is an 8 speed automatic transmission. Now I am super excited to be driving this here Palisade for a couple of reasons. Mainly the fact that this is the calligraphy which is the top trim level for the Palisade for 2022. And so I get to experience the Palisade as it was meant to be which is fantastic. The other reason is that recently I reviewed a Hyundai Veracruz from 2007, which was Hyundai's first big three row SUV. That car kind of flopped. Well, this one didn't. And we'll talk about some similarities there a little bit later on. But before we get on to anything else, I have a website, zachpradle.com, where you could buy merch like this retro sticker pack I have available for just $10. You can also submit your own vehicle to be reviewed by me through a quick and easy submission form, as well as you could read my behind the scenes blog to see what I'm filming before it comes out on the channel. But let's get back to that 3.8 liter V6, making 291 horsepower, 262 foot pounds of torque. Well, the 3.8 liter has been used by Hyundai for quite some time. It was actually first used in that Veracruz that I mentioned earlier. And so it's a pretty stout, pretty reliable engine. It's non-turbo, so it doesn't have any additional help, but that also means that you're not going to have to deal with turbos that break. Turbo engines have more parts, more parts that will end up breaking later on. So the 3.8 liter is pretty bread and butter and it's a solid engine. Like I said, paired to it is an eight speed automatic. Again, very, very smooth, very nice, very quiet. Driving it around here in the regular drive modes, I don't notice anything too particularly crazy about it. Last but not least, this particular Palisade is all-wheel drive, which is a $1,700 option, meaning you can still find Palisades in just front-wheel drive, but this is the all-wheel drive. But before we get on with the interior, let's talk about the calligraphy package. It has a lot to do with the interior, which is why I put it at this point in the video. So this is what the calligraphy package gets you over the next trim level down. You get puddle lights on the bottom of the side mirrors, premium rear accent lighting, premium front grille, premium skid plates, premium side door garnish, quilted leather door panels, microfiber headliner, I love that, perforated leather wrap steering wheel, and premium cargo sill plate. The calligraphy package costs about $1,500 more than the next trim level down, bringing this total to about $48,285 as you saw at the beginning of the video, which is just a registration fee and a big lunch away from being $50 thousand dollars fifty thousand dollars for a hyundai is it worth it well let's dig into it so let's talk about the interior well in front of me i have digital gauges on the left is my speedometer with fuel and on the right is my tachometer and coolant temperature but like i said these are digital gauges so not only can you customize what you want to see in the middle but when you switch drive modes, it does this awesome, awesome animation. So right now we are in comfort mode. Let's move it over to eco. You get this explosion of green. I really like that. Then we could go down here to snow mode and you sort of get this water effect. Back over to sport and you get this explosion and everything turns red. I love that. And then down to smart, you get this water animation yet again. And back up into comfort, it's that same water animation. I love this. I think digital gauges should be highly customizable because it's a screen. I should be able to watch old reruns of Arrested Development on my gauge cluster screen if I really wanted to. Is that safe? No, and car makers shouldn't do that. But I should have that capability because it's a screen. I can do whatever I want. Last thing I'll say about the gauge cluster is when you turn on the turn signal, it turns on a blind spot camera, much like it does in the new Sorento and new EV6. The new Sportage does this from Kia. So this is really, really nice. It doesn't have a super high frame rate. It's not super smooth, but having a blind spot camera is awesome. 
Up above the steering wheel, I do have a heads up display. It has a couple colors in it. It looks decent, but honestly, I'm just not a big fan of heads up displays. However, the calligraphy comes with that if that's something that you would like. On the steering wheel, on the left, I have my mode, voice commands, volume, skip track, and phone options. And on the right, I have my pages and cruise control settings. This does have adaptive cruise control. This is the perforated leather steering wheel. It has paddle shifters around the back. It's fine. This looks super Hyundai, which kind of looks a little cheap to me, but that's okay. One thing I will note that I dislike about the steering wheel is the fact that you can move it up and down. I don't really normally talk about this because I normally don't really adjust steering wheels, but I had to adjust the one in the Palisade today, and it's a manual steering wheel. It's not power telescoping like you would see in other luxury vehicles. At $50,000, I'd kinda like that, but whatever, moving on. Off to the left, I have my gauge dimmer switches, blind spot monitoring, lane keep assist, traction control, my tailgate release, and my power parking brake release. And on the door, I have two different memory seat options. And I have my power mirrors and power windows along with that quilted door sill that's part of the calligraphy package. I really, really like that look and feel. Definitely feels very, very premium. Moving into the center, we have the Hyundai infotainment system, so let's pull over and talk about it. All right, let's talk Palisade infotainment. Now, the first thing I notice right off the bat is that this uses Kia's new infotainment system, just it's basically reskinned. Here's what Kia's infotainment system looks like. You'll even see that the buttons are in the same place, but they just look different, which is pretty fun and unique, and I do like this sort of blue look and the map is like inside a jar and the very, I, I, I love, whoever designed these logos, my hat's off to you. I, I, I wanna take you out to dinner. I love the look of these logos. The responsiveness of the screen is pretty good. And we'll get a quick backup camera here real quick. Now that is putting it into reverse. And as you can see, turning the steering wheel changes the lines, but we also have tons of other cameras. We could look at a side view, just a back view, top down view. If you're gonna tow something, really, really nice. And of course you get the bird's eye view as well, which is awesome. Moving over here, we also have the sounds of nature, which is the exact same background as Kia and has all of the exact same sounds as Kia. I wish that Hyundai added a handful of sounds just to make me feel like, oh, they put a little bit more effort into the Hyundai or a little bit different. I guess that's coming from someone that drives so many Kias, but nevertheless, we can shut that up now. My one gripe with this infotainment system is that in here, I do have ambient lighting in the doors. Now, how would you change the ambient lighting? Most vehicles have a little button or app right there that says ambient lighting. You click that, you change your color, and you get on about your day. However, if you wanna do that here in the Palisade, something that I would change the color according to my mood, according to the day, you have to go to setup, vehicle, go down here to lights, ambient light, color, and now I can switch my color. It does have some cool names, polar white, moon white, ice blue, ocean blue, jade green, orchid green, freesia yellow, sunrise red. That's actually the color of my first RX-7 I owned. So let's do that. Aurora purple, that's where I went to school. Maybe this was made for me. Lightning violet, or I could do a custom color. I can set a custom color. Look at this. That's a lot of color options. Let's do like a mint green. Let's set that. So I love the fact that I can change the ambient lighting. I just don't like the fact that it's hidden behind like three different menus. I wanna be able to just go boom, ambient lighting, jade green, boom, go about my day. Unfortunately, I can't do that here in the Palisade. One last thing I do wanna note is that this vehicle does have the Harman Kardon speaker system, which is fantastic. BMW uses it, so you know it's good stuff, and that comes here in the calligraphy. Then I have two climate control vents and the hazard switch along with a ton of radio dials for volume, power, tune, file, track, all of the things here. This is very Kia, very Hyundai but that's okay. The Palisade is getting to be a couple years old at this point. So we are going to start to notice a couple of things that are a little bit dated, but not the end of the world in any regard. Moving on to the center console itself, this reminds me a lot of the Escalade, which is high props. But I have my climate controls up the top. I have dual zone. It says I get clean air, which just means it comes with a cabin air filter, which I'd say probably 90% of cars do these days, but Nevertheless, dual zone, where to send it, temperature, all that stuff. 
And then I have more options coming down below. Off to the left is where you'll find the shifter. It's a push button shifter, which a lot of cars are going to, especially a lot of luxury vehicles. It's a nice, clean, simple look. Off to the right of that, I have my auto holding brake. Then I have my drive mode select as well as my locking differential. Very, very nice off-road feature there. And I have some more nice off-road features off to the right with hill descent control, parking sensors on and off, automatic start stop on and off, and my view button, which I can toggle on. And of course, that center screen will show me my cameras, which is just fantastic. Down below that, to finish out that sort of button-filled area, we have the heated and ventilated seat options, as well as the heated steering wheel. Then we get this giant openable cubby in the center. We will do a big friggin' bottle test. However, this is the exact opposite of a Goldilocks cup holder. It has these cup holders that sort of pop out, which is nice, but the big friggin' bottle doesn't fit in those. But if you push them away and close them, which you can absolutely do, then the space is too big and there's not enough to hold the big friggin' bottle in. So unfortunately, the 2022 Hyundai Palisade fails the big friggin' bottle test. <laughs> But filling out the rest of this cubby, I do have a wireless charger and USB in. And then in the center console, I just get a nice little tray, nothing too crazy. The seats are very comfortable, and I will say the driving position here in the Palisade is mwah, spot on. As soon as I got into the car and I adjusted the steering wheel a little bit, I felt very much at home. I like the driving position. I can see a lot. The seat is very comfortable. It is heated. It is ventilated. It is memory. It is power and you get these nice quilted touches up at the top. This reminds me of an Audi, another luxury brand with high props. But speaking of seats, we do have three rows of seating. So let's go do some backseat reviews. All right, so we're in the second row of the 2022 Hyundai Palisade Calligraphy. A couple of things to note back here. First of all, knees are not hitting the seat in front of me. Head has plenty of space. I have vents up here. I have these nice LED lights up here, as well as I do get the mood lighting or ambient lighting in the doors here, which is very, very nice. I have it set to blue because it's my favorite color. I have these sun shades I can pull out of the door, which is very nice. The Harman Kardon speakers carry on back here. I have my own climate controls back here. And I don't know how many vehicles I've seen this in, not a lot. I have ventilated seats for the second row. So this seat right here is ventilated and heated, which is fantastic. I also get a 12 volt outlet and a AC 115 volt max 150 watt wall outlet back here. So if I wanna charge something like a camera, I can absolutely do that here in the back. I do get these little armrests and Palisades could be configured with a bench seat back here or the two captain's chairs. This obviously is the captain chairs setup. I do also have USB chargers on the backs or sides really of the front seat, which is kind of peculiar. Let's go hop into the third row and see if it holds up back there. All right, now in the third row of the Palisade and I do have chargers on either side back here as well. Obviously, this is not really meant for adults. I'm back here, but at what cost? My head, really, and my knees, I guess. I do have cup holders back here, and these seats do power go down. We'll talk about that when we talk about the cargo space, but it's nice that it has three rows. This is a three-row SUV, and I like the fact that it doesn't sacrifice second-row space. Could I sit back here? Yes. Would I be happy about it? No. To be expected out of an SUV of this size. Let's go take a look at the cargo space and trunk and then we'll talk about the looks. It is really windy today, so my apologies, but hold it down here. Power opening tailgate, which is very nice. Of course, the floor mats, because it is a used car, but I do have these really handy buttons here. So this is for the second row and for the third row. There we go. Very, very nice, very smooth operation and it automatically does the headrests. Bada bing, bada boom. And the nice thing is that from these buttons, you can also raise them. So I'll leave them down, but you can raise them from here too. You get a 12 volt outlet. And that's pretty much it. I'm sorry, I'm really fighting the wind here, but that's it for the cargo space. Pretty adequate for a three row SUV to be expected. Nothing crazy, but nice nevertheless. Now we gotta talk about the looks. I do like the look of the Hyundai Palisade. The grill for the calligraphy is a little bit different. 
However, it's not my favorite thing in the world. I don't think it's this particularly handsome vehicle, but it does the job. I'm excited to see with Hyundai's new design language when the Palisade gets a refresh. I think they'll really nail it then. And so that ties into my final thoughts. Let's get to my final thoughts. I think the reason why this is sort of so reserved and whatnot is because Hyundai was testing the water again with a three row SUV. Like I mentioned at the top of the video, I recently reviewed a Hyundai Veracruz from 2007. And that SUV was a three row SUV, their first one, and it kind of flopped. Now, I went through the comments and I read blog posts and no one really agrees on why it flopped. A lot of people say Hyundai's name wasn't really a foothold in American sales quite yet. Some people say it was ugly, which to be fair, it was, it wasn't a looker. But I'm happy to say and happy to report that now the Palisade is good, very, very good. The Veracruz walked so the Palisade could run, and run it does. It does everything pretty well in here. Yeah, I have my complaint about the manual steering wheel, but who cares at the end of the day? You're gonna adjust it once and never again. It's not the most attractive vehicle in the world to me, but I think it still is decent, it's okay. Besides those points, I really, really like this car. I think Hyundai has been pushing the envelope recently. They recently brought out the Santa Cruz, uh, pickup truck thing. The new Sonata has very bold styling and cool headlights. The new Santa Fe has hidden headlights. I like what Hyundai and Kia have been doing, and I know I sound like a broken record. I know I say it in all my modern Kia reviews, but it's the truth. And the Palisade is another one of these great vehicles. I think the calligraphy package is a little pricey, but you get a lot of nice features in here. Mainly the biggest thing that I like in here is the microfiber headliner and the diamond stitch doors. That really makes this car feel like it's another tier up from the competition. And I really, really like that. Here's the Hyundai actually making a three row SUV that doesn't completely flop. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Huge thank you to Chevy of Naperville for letting me take out their used 2022 Hyundai Palisade barely used to be fair only 7,000 miles they are absolutely awesome we've been working together for over three years now chevy of naperville is fantastic they have great customer service and they will find the right vehicle for you whether that be a new chevy product or something like this a hyundai palisade calligraphy but i hope you guys enjoyed the video don't forget to rate the video comment on the video and subscribe if you really liked it take care guys